All right. It's time we take a look at a number of examples on transforming the graphs of functions. On 18 of this section, 1.5, which can be found on page 122 of the textbook, we're given the function g of x, and it's defined to be the square root of x minus 4. And the instructions say that we're to graph this function from the library of functions from uh, section 1.4 and then graph this function using the ideas of transformations here. Well, to get the basic function the one which we're going to transform into G we're basically just going to strip away all the kind of unessential stuff. The minus 4, that's a transformation. So all we're left with, if we strip away the minus 4, is the square root of x. So our base function, f of x if you will, is just square root of x. And its graph looks like the following it's going to pass through the point 0, 0 and through the point 1, 1. And have this arc to it. Now, you can find all this information in section 1.4 on pages 103 and 104. you'll see the graphs of all these basic graphs that we're using here. So the next thing to do is to determine how is, what transformation do we need to apply to f of x to get g of x? Well, I already said minus 4 was the transformation. So when you're adding or subtracting, that's just going to be a simple shift moving the graph around. And since the minus 4 is outside the square root, it's not inside close to the x, this is going to be a vertical transformation. So g of x is just f of x, this graph here, but it's going to have a vertical shift, and vertical does exactly what you want, so minus 4 is going to shift down 4. So instead of having, instead of passing through the point 0, 0, g of x is going to pass through the point minus 4, or excuse me, 0, minus 4. We just move this point down 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. I have to change the scale a bit because I can't fit this graph on the way I drew it. And instead of the point 1, 1, we're going to move this point down 4, so it's going to be the point 1, minus 3. And so this is the graph of g of x. It looks like the graph of square root of x, except g of x is shifted down 4 units. Let's take a look at 20. Here we're told that f of x should be defined as absolute value of x minus 2. 
Well, the basic thing going on here is the absolute value. The minus 2, this is just a transformation. So, the kind of basic graph that we're looking at is the graph of y equals absolute value of x, which, if you go back to 1.4, on page 103-104, you'll see that this graph is just a V. It's just this V shape. So then the question becomes, how do we get f of x? What transformations do we need to apply to this basic graph to get f of x? So the minus 2 is inside the absolute values. That makes it a horizontal transformation, because this is as close to x as minus 2 can get. It's also subtracting. So x minus 2 means it's going to be a shift left or right. And because horizontal is backwards, we would think x minus 2 would move it to the left, but it doesn't. We're going to move this graph to the right. by two units. So, let's say, this passes through the point 0, 0. So this kind of corner on the V is going to move 2 to the right. So, one, two, this is where the corner will sit. And we'll have the V right on zero or uh, two zero. And this is the graph of F of X. So f of x is just the absolute value of x, but shifted right to. All right. Now let's take a look at something like 24. In 24, we have g of x being defined as x plus 3 squared, then minus 5. So the minus 5, that's one transformation, plus 3 is another. So this is going to have two transformations in it. So if we strip out these two transformations, the plus 3 and the minus 5, all we're left with is just x squared. So our basic graph is simply y equals x squared. And that again sits on top of the x-axis, but it's curved. It's your basic parabola. So there's two things to do here. Let's take a look at each of them. The plus 3 is as close to the x as it can get. So the plus 3, this is a horizontal transformation. In fact, it's a horizontal shift. Horizontal is always backwards. So instead of plus, instead of to the right, this is going to be left three units. And the minus five, this is away from the x, so this is going to be a vertical transformation, or a vertical shift, because it's subtraction. And addition and subtraction produce shifts. 
So it's going to be a shift down because vertical is exactly what you want it to be, down by 5. So g of x is going to be this graph, but it's going to be left 3, down 5. So we've got this point here at 0, 0. So we have to move this point 3 to the left and 5 down. And that's where we'll get the, the parabola. That's where the parabola will sit. And if you want, you can do these one at a time. You know, so for example, we can do the, we can start with shifting left 3. So this would be the point minus 3, 0. So that's left 3. And then we shift this down 5. and that's 3, so we'll be sitting at this point. So this is g of x. We shifted left 3 and then down 5. So you can do them one at a time if you need to, um, or if you like you could have done it all at once. If you could see that this was going to sit at the point minus 3 minus 5 here, you could have just gone straight from here to here. But if you have trouble seeing that, you can do one transformation at a time. All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's do one more. number 32, where we have h of x being defined as minus x plus 1 cubed. Now clearly the plus 1 is a transformation, so we're going to ignore it to find the basic graph. Then the other thing, this negative, this also is a transformation. It's a reflection. So to get the basic graph, we ignore this too. So ignoring the negative, ignoring the plus 1, we're just left with x cubed. So the graph of x cubed kind of snakes through the origin like this. And so then the question becomes, what transformations do we need to apply to this basic graph to get the graph of h of x? Well, let's take a look. We've got the negative x plus 3 cubed. The negative here, that's outside the parentheses. So that's away from the, that's away from x. So this is a vertical, and multiplying by a negative is a reflection. So this is a vertical reflection. And then the plus 3, that's as close to the x as it can get. So it's horizontal. It's being added to x, which makes it a shift. Now left or right? Well, I would think this would go right 3, but it's horizontal. So it's the opposite. It's left 3. And again, if you want, you can do these one at a time. So we can take the vertical reflection first. So this is going to be flipped upside down. So we get something that looks like this. flipping everything over the x-axis and then moving everything left by 3 this passes through the point 0, 0 the vertical reflection will never touch anything that sits on the x-axis you know, this will pass through the point 1, 1 
one one becomes the point one negative one. The y values have their sign changed on them. But changing the sign of y equals zero doesn't do anything, it's still zero. So moving this point, zero, zero, left by three units means we're going to be at the point minus three comma zero. So one, two, three, and this should be the graph of h of x. sitting on the point minus three, zero.